Madam President, sometimes setting records is a good thing. For 40 years, being a college football coach in this country, you tried to set records. But the records this current administration has been breaking aren't exactly worth celebrating. For example, we're seeing record crime and record prices increases. President Biden even threw a big party last week at the White House to celebrate high record prices. Same day our record market losses in uh, the market. But even those stale stats in comparison to the record shattering crisis at our southern border, another thing that they've declared victory on without attempting to solve the problem. We could solve it. Democrats don't want to solve this problem. I guess they'd rather listen to James Taylor on the White House lawn, but the people of Alabama hadn't forgotten what's going on at the southern border because we're seeing the same influx in our state. So let's look at back in the two years of record breaking that we've seen since the Biden border crisis began. And the solutions the Democrats refused to refix the problem. When President Biden took office, he rolled back many policies as possible that secured our southern border. This immediate reversal in security measures was something he had promised on the campaign trail. So we expected it. Migrants from around the world were prepared to take advantage of the new administration's soft on security approach at our border. Since then, the border crisis has set record after record. In this fiscal year alone, we have surpassed two million apprehensions of illegal immigrants at our southern border for the first time ever in the history of our country. Last year, that number was over 1.7 million showing the crisis at our border is accelerating, not slowing under this administration. After this is almost two years and has grown, the vice president's work to address what they call the root causes of migration has been a disaster. Some will try to twist those numbers to use as proof that enforcement is working, but that is obviously a red herring. The staggering, staggering encounters and arrests only highlights even more shocking the number of illegal immigrants we never see, those who get away, what we call the gotaways. For those we release in the United States, we release and they never come back. The truth is we will probably never, ever get a true number of those who have entered our country illegally. We're a country of immigrants. We like immigration, but come here legal. But we do not know that this surge was stretched and the resources have been thin ever since the border has been open. We cannot follow up with the illegal immigrants. We do not encounter to properly screen them and begin immigration proceedings. You can't have proceedings on people that you do not recognize and know where they have gone. Almost one third of illegal immigrants processed in the time immediately after Biden took office, one third have never returned for their check, check in with officials as called by law. Meaning we have no idea where these people are at and they had no intention of coming back checking in. Meanwhile, Secretary Mayorkas has repeatedly told Congress repeatedly that the border is secure. While bureaucrats in D.C. may be sticking to that ridiculous spin, our own agents at the border know the truth. The head of the Border Patrol has admitted advising his agents to release illegal immigrants into the country who would typically be apprehended because they do not have the resources to handle the influx of the people coming to the country 
we just turn them loose. In fact, the Border Patrol chief said he has never seen anything like this current situation in his 31 years of working for the agency. This position we are putting our law enforcement officials in is unacceptable. But this administration does nothing, does nothing to stop anything that's happening. Instead, they just tell us the border is secure when our president has not even visited the border in his 19 months in office. However, we know people aren't the only thing flooding across the borders and into our communities. Unthinkable amounts of deadly fentanyl and other drugs are being smuggled in, into this country every single day. Drug cartels are more emboldened than ever to send as many deadly drugs as possible to the border because they know they can take advantage of the crisis that has been unfolding here for two years. Just in the past week, officers have seized $211,000 worth of cocaine, $2.3 million worth of meth coming across the Texas border, and 187 pounds of fentanyl pills hidden in a vehicle in one single bus in Arizona. To put that in perspective, that's enough fentanyl to kill more than 40 two million people, nearly 10 times the population of my state of Alabama. And that's what our Border Patrol agents have stopped. Imagine what's gone undetected through this new open border policy. More than 71,000 Americans died so far this year of fentanyl overdoses, 71,000. That's 195 people a day in this country that are dying because we refuse to stop the fentanyl from coming into our country. And along with that, the drug cartels are becoming more and more rich and more and more entailed to do exactly what they want to do. It's yet another problem the Democrats refuse to discuss or address out of fear of backlash from the radical, open-bordered ideologues running this administration and its immigration policies. Somebody's got control of this. One day we'll find out. But Democrats are quick to call out the problem when it ends up on their front porch. Mayors in New York, Chicago, and right here in D.C. have cried foul and even declared an emergency when the border crisis was delivered here to this city and others. They have no problem ignoring, excusing, and misrepresenting the facts of the crisis when it's hitting small towns far away in Texas, Arizona, and their southern neighbors. But when those illegal immigrants streaming across the border become the problems of theirs, they suddenly see an emergency. But who do they blame? Obviously, it's the Republicans, not the leader of their party, President Biden has created this mess. They blame local and state leaders who are drowning in a humanitarian crisis that the Democrats are making every day and refusing to stop. Even as news reports how, how, even as news reports how his own DHS planned to ship illegal immigrants to sanctuary cities across the country, President Biden condemns Republican leaders for doing the same. It's hypocrisy at its highest degree. What's worse is their refusal to fix the problem, even though they're well aware of the steps that could be taken to secure the border. First and foremost, finish the wall that they have stopped building. Although the wall itself will not solve everything, it could certainly help address the number of people that get away, a number averaging one thousand per week in some locations. Secondly, fully reinstate the wildly successful migrant protection protocols, which require individuals awaiting asylum proceedings to wait in Mexico, not come over in the United States and wait, wait in New Mexico and let's go through your, your process. If people know they will not be allowed in the United States, they will not make the journey to our border 
knowing that they'll have to wait. As of last week, we had accepted into this country people from 180 different countries. That's a long travel if you know that you may not get in. And lastly, Democrats could do much better job of supporting law enforcement to address human smuggling and trafficking efforts at the border. As long as the border is wide open, cartels will take advantage of the situation. They're making billions of dollars a year by moving people, drugs into the United States, and it's getting worse every day. Americans are dying. Cities, cities are being overrun. Criminals are getting rich. Those are the consequences of President Biden's border crisis. Those are the problems that our Democrat colleagues have to fix. While President Biden and Democrats celebrate the White House with celebrities, Americans are suffering because of these failures. Most notably, their inability and unwillingness to keep our country safe. So, here's to the Democrats' record-breaking year. Record inflation, record crime, record drugs, record-shattering illegal immigration. We can only hope they run out of things to celebrate in the very near future. I yield the floor.